which one I am going to take next is you know delete overlapping request from the cube. Okay, so what exactly is this delete overlapping request from cube? So in order to you know teach you this with the practical example, what I want to do first let me check my data target content in this target. Okay, go to display active data execute because it is cube type now we don't have data in the active data so go to new data and click on execute button so now if i see here 1001 material okay you see now what happening here if you see here i have different months of data here january data february data february march okay so what is exactly the deleting overlapping request the concept which we are discussing is uh, in the process chain we have a topic uh, variant called delete overlapping request okay so to understand this one first we need to learn a little bit you know uh, theoretically also in cube what is the difference between dso to cube okay what is the difference between dso to the cube in dso the key figures mainly follows overwrite functionality it means if you have a record 1001 with quantity 10 okay so for example this is document number this is quantity okay and you loaded this data into this dso with the request one okay and again you try to load the same document again you trying to load same document 1001 on request 2 okay so what happens in the output what happens in the output of your uh, you know dso means in the active table of your dso do you see this document number with 10 or 20 value because by default in the dso the over it is uh, the key figures contains override functionality this is will be this will be shown as 10 only okay for example in the request to if there is a change came here 15 then also in your output you will see 15 it means latest value you see in your dso because of the override functionality 10 will be override with the 15 value so this is how a dso works okay but when coming to cube in cube the default functionality of any key figure is summation okay it means if there is a request came with a uh, you know uh, document number 1001 with the quantity 10 and another request came same request with uh, you know requ on request 2 uh, another record uh, same record came on another request 2 with same document number but quantity 15 this time in your cube the final output will be 1001 plus 25 why because cube follows always summation functionality default okay so you 25 which is actually exactly wrong actually here because the latest value 15 you are expecting 15 but if you do multiple data loads to a you know cube uh, on the same data set then the data will become, become doubled okay based upon number of requests you are loading it will become it will keep on increasing so for that reason in a cube if you have already data and if you are trying to load same data again one more time it is important first you do the selective deletion okay if you wish to load another record 1001 with the 15 quantity then your primary activity is first to delete the target uh, this cube selective deletion we call it as a, uh, how to do selective deletion in a cube i think i shown you like uh, we covered that one uh, first we need to do the selective deletion on this 1001 document number from the cube so that what happens request you can see still but this record will be deleted then to perform data load for this again one more time now only one copy of this request will be available in the cube so finally you will see the correct value on your output okay so this is the functionality of cube so uh, now why i discussed all this content now why because generally in real time scenarios sometimes for some of the dso's we do full loads daily okay we perform full loads daily so what is the scenario here you have source data you have some source data in the source data uh, you have data for on monthly basis weekly basis or daily monthly basis let's say monthly basis 2022 08 august month so this month data you are trying to load into your target today which is nothing but on 16 08 2022 
on this data you are trying to load uh, our complete august month data from your source into your target okay and this is your recurring requirement for each month you want to do every day full load due to some business reasons so tomorrow also what you do tomorrow also you want to perform another full load into your target okay but if your target is of cube type what happens here if your cube type then the data is becoming doubled and tomorrow also if you do one more time and it becomes tripled so like this it will keep on increasing so when you have this kind of scenarios generally what we do is uh, we will apply here on the target delete overlapping request which means on the when you have a requirement to load current month data from source to target what exactly you will do before loading it on you have a dtp on the dtp you are going to provide a filter in the filter you are going to provide current month as a filter so with this filter you are fetching this 2022-08 data into your target so the you now delete overlapping request is whenever there are two requests with the same filter remember whenever there are two requests for example this is request one and this is request two and there are two requests with the same filter system will delete after successful execution of request two in the target system will do the other overlapping request from the target okay so this is the automatic activity system can do based upon this delete overlapping request you know concept okay because uh, after the means you are load, trying to load this august month data into your target on 17th if it is successful in the target execution then system will do this deletion of the 16th day data from the target for example at any point of time if 17th request got failed and it came to red then system don't delete this you know requested because um, uh, if it deleted uh, when it is failure then you know what happened you lost data of august until you resolve the issue okay so now this is the concept behind the delete overlapping request now how to define this delete overlapping request so in order to show this practically what i need to do i need to uh, load first january data uh, now let me first delete data from this ads form delete data yes i am deleted my data here okay um, yeah you can do it from here or how you can do it uh, if it is bw4 hana slash n r s m n g okay let me take my cube name because it is uh, coming rs7 it is easy for me right click delete data if it is uh, bw4 hana you don't have the screen at all then go to rs m n g provide your you know ads for name click on execute button and it will you know you will get this kind of screen and from here you know uh, you have an option called you know uh, from the from the utilities delete contents okay if you click on do you want to delete the content of the target click on yes then it will be deleted means all the requests from this uh, all the data along with the request information from this target will be deleted Why it is taking this much time? Just a second. Yeah, let's keep on this. Now, next, what I will okay, this will uh, this is happening. I don't know why this is taking this much time. Um, now I'm taking another screen to go further step. So now what I'm going to do is in the DTP from this source to target on the DTP, I'm going to apply a filter on the cal month. Okay. So first I will try to load January month data into this DSO and then I will try to load February month data. Okay. So now this is my source and this is my source and target. Uh, and if I go to transformation here, do I have cal month available in my source? I need to check that first. Yeah, Calmanth is available. Uh, you see, Calmanth is not available. My bad. Fine. Calmanth is only available on the target, but not on the. Then at DTP level, I cannot provide filter on the Calmanth. But still, I have an option. I have. I can provide filter on the material M1. Okay. I think we have data for uh, two materials M1 and M2. Uh, so I can do. You, you know, instead of Calmanth, I can take an example on material and show you how to do this kind of activity. 
So let me go to active data, execute. You see, I have data for M1, M2. So first I will try to load M1 data with my DTP filter. Go to DTP, edit mode of the DTP, go to filter section and provide filter on material M1. So now what happens here? Now only M1 data out of four records, I think I have two records for material M1. These two records will be loaded to my target. So I don't touch this in request as this. So I am running this TTP. I am clicking on execute button. So now in my cube, I have data for M1. Okay, good. Now next what I am going to do, I am going to perform one more, you know, select one more load to this target on middle M2 this time. M2. One minute, one minute. So I am I'm changing it to M2 activating it but I, I don't run it from here i will run it from the process chain m2 okay um, now i will take this dtp technical name i will take this dtp technical name copy so you see already there is one request in my ads for for this request the dtp filter which i given is m1 by going to header tab, I can see this uh, DTP filter as M1. Okay. Now, oh, okay, okay, one second. I think it is not full DTP, right? It is uh, Delta DTP, I think. Yeah, sorry. It's Delta DTP. Let me check. Let me, you know, delete data again one more time from the content. Delete data. Yes. Because full load, you know, full for full load, we can do this kind of activity, not for the Delta load. Okay. So, I edit my DTP one more time to full DTP and then in order to change any DTP from Delta to full or full to Delta, first of all you need to drop data from the content or else it is not possible to simply change it. If you if the DTP is already in usage, it is not possible to change it. But if it is a new DTP without any usage, then we can do it. Okay. Clarity is important, right? That's why. So M1. Mm -hmm and then click on execute button so initially i am loading data m1 into my target so it was uh, two records will be loaded to my target done now i am changing my dtp filter to m2 and i don't execute now this time manually i will try to execute this time it from the uh, process chain and from and along with it i will uh, you know add my delete overlapping request thing also so now I'm copying the DTP from here, copy it, and then go to my process chain. What I will do, I will delete this variant. Okay, remove process, remove process. I think same DTP, I can add a thing. DTP, I'm adding this DTP here. So after adding the DTP, full DTP here, After adding full DTP, delete overlapping request from data store object, select on it and you know, uh, provide the name here. What is the target? Here. So GPC underscore variant overlapping request deletion. Okay. But uh, for which target? It's good actually if you can overlap request right. First, let me give the technical name here and then provide overlapping request deletion. Now click on create button. So this will be created overlapping request deletion. And this one, click on OK. Here you need to provide the DTP. So when you're doing this kind of thing, because overlapping request is concerned with respect to DTP, okay? Because you may have multiple DTPs, uh, this activity will be done because I told you it will check the filter. If, the, if there is a request with the same filter, then it will delete it. So it will be linked with the DTP technical name. So you need to select the DTP technical name, provide here, press enter, and also delete request loaded by other DTPs. No, don't touch this one. Also delete request loaded with the less uh, respect to DTP filter. No, don't touch this one. Just click on save button. Go back one step. Yes. 
deletion of overlapping request only supported for uh, yeah. okay maybe you know screen refresh problem because you know this particular uh, screen was open long but uh, I think it is still considering the DDP as delta only uh, let me go here change mode of this one delete this one remove process now if I open this TTP it is considering this TTP as full now okay this one mapping and then I am going to load process delete overlapping request from advanced um, okay, not existed so let me create one more time because we are in not save it was not created okay now if you can enter and you click on save button you see this time it was saved SAP works with timestamp because the screen was open long back uh, still it is considering this TTP as a delta TTP even though we changed it to full okay successful so only after deletion after a successful execution of this TTP it will go to this step and it will delete the overlapping request if it is available now I am activating this process chain I am executing this at this point of time this TTP will be executed with the filter M2 but with M2 filter I don't have any request in my target remember this is important because we are doing a test case now and understanding this test case is very important okay if I go to my ADSO and manage button in the manage button I can see only one request and in this request I can see the DTP filter as M1 okay now I am going to execute my process chain which is running with M2 filter and delete overlapping request there is no request with M2 filter so I am expecting it will load data but it won't delete any of the request from my target content so it is executing now refresh yeah this m2 dtp is executing it's not it started it failed why right it failed and go to chain backlog uh, object DTP is locked by user okay this DTP is in edit mode or somewhere um, by me you see I am in change mode of this DTP that's why you know, so a DTP is can be failed when we are when it was locked by someone okay so because it is in change mode it is locked so uh, how to do it how to repeat it this one right click on it click on repair and click on okay repair is nothing but rerun the DTP so now it will try to rerun the DTP since the lock was removed now so it is processed successfully now it is trying to delete the overlapping request now the chain is completed now if I come back to my you know process uh, manage of my ADS4 you see second request now generated and in the second request I can see the filter now um, on the M2 filter is there filter on M2 material is equal to M2 now this particular request was loaded at what time this request was loaded on 2050-06 okay and yeah, let me take a snapshot so how to take snapshots in here uh, you in, in uh, you know in uh, snipping tool there will be a tool called snipping tool is it not there? okay it is not the snipping tool will be there from there you can take it but uh, Mm. So fine, let it be. But remember, 2052.06 is the timestamp when we triggered this process chain, uh, this DTP 2052. Why I am taking this timestamp? Because now I am going to run process chain one more time. Now this time, because again the DTP is running with same M2 filter. Now after execution of M2, it will delete this request and keep original request. Okay. So now what I am going to do, I am double clicking on my PC and triggering my PC one more time. So now go, let me go here and show you. You see third request is generating with 2053 timestamp. And once after 2053 successful, it deleted 2052. It's gone. So the timestamp which was there on 2052, it's gone. Okay. So like this delete overlapping request will be worked in the real time. 
so yeah this we will get this kind of requirement in real time so it is a very important for us to learn this one so uh, what else uh, pending here delete overlapping request is completed mm. delete from target already change of deletion so what is change i would uh, you know how to, i will show you how to delete change i don't do this change of deletion now mm. change not deletion but i will let you know what exactly this is this change of deletion i don't execute this change of deletion now but this is one of the step which you know which you need to understand so what is change of deletion so uh, in real time what happens we create uh, a ds was change log will be available for only ads was so of type standard ads for correct for cube and all we don't have change log table hmm? so uh, what we will do for example uh, you are in your you started uh, this uh, you know data loading from source into target for example on 2022 uh, okay 2022 january you started your data loads means uh, you 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 moved your changes to production and uh, moving of data from r3 to source system our bw system got started from january uh, january so from january month you keep on adding new data to this ads it keep on adding means you will add you know two three four five six all the months of data <laughs> means in one month you may have million record millions of records uh, but you keep on adding because you need reporting on top of all these things uh, you keep on adding this data into your target okay so now at one point of time what happens the num since you are adding data the change log also active table is active active table is filling with data at the same time change log table also is filling with data okay it means even though you are doing data load only to one target in the back end and unknowingly you know two tables are getting involved one is the active table and the change log table so what is the importance of change log table the importance of change log table is when we load data from ads standard ads for into cube system will always take data from the change log table correct so having data in the change log table is important but for example currently we are in 2022 uh, let's say 2023 08 okay you are on august sorry just a second for example you are in 2023 august month okay at any point of time if the if you consider this is sales data or whatever data to be let's take it as sales data on 2023 uh, no one will come from 2022 january or february and ask you to do modifications on his bill whatever sales order because because it may come for example people who ordered on last month or day before you know uh, one after last month it is okay they may come and ask you because they deliver if the delivery is not it happened they can come and ask you to change their order quantity but 90 percent we don't get any changes from the last year at least from past 12 months or six months now we are not we don't expect too many changes in the data change log is important only to capture the change information and move that information to the next targets okay whenever you thought this changes may not happen for the data not past three months then what you can do you can delete the change log table past you know uh, uh, you can delete the change log data not table data if you content of the uh, content of this change log table partially uh, based upon the date which is passed in last three months okay so this is the this kind of requirement this kind of activity we generally do in our production systems uh, in order to you know manage the da database sizes okay so now i think i hope you understand why we do change log deletion now okay so if you want to perform this kind of activity this again we don't do this activity manually so we always do this activity using our regular process chains only so you create this deletion of request from change log here you need to provide your ds4 name ads4 name and then info area uh, optional and then older than so here days you are going to provide number of days older than for example my requirement is i don't get any data past three months means 90 days so i will keep 90 days here so that system will delete the past 90 days data 
means past from not from here to not 90 days which is older than 90 days system will delete the data which is older than 90 days okay so and then here we have request right only successful request so there is again a condition like here only if that request was loaded to next target then um, but this is only for PSA, not for this one, I think. But here also, if the trick, if the data is already processed, then only it will delete, or else won't delete. If you if you do this checkbox, if you do this one, it will delete even if it is not processed. And if it is, then delete active request, delete activation request only, no load requests. Mm. Activated requests only, it will delete. In this case, I don't know what is this option exactly, but. Uh, generally, you need to understand the importance of change log. Change log deletion we will do basically in order to save the uh, you know database uh, space consumption. Okay, and here we provide the DS4 name and info area and the number of old days that we want to delete the change log. That's it. Okay, so I can add here my DS ADS4 name. I don't run this one, but I simply adding, you know, one thing here just to show you info area not required uh, and 90 days is in. if you not know info area, it will, uh, you know, replace with star button here. Click on save button, click on version of data show object SRS, uh, say. advanced ADS force, uh, what we do, we do, we use this cleanup of old requests in data show objects. For classic objects, what happen uh, for in the old traditional BW uh, you know, on HANA and the BW on traditional databases, uh, we have the change log deletion separate step like normal non HANA database, non HANA based object, normal DS4. But for advanced ADS4, if you want to perform change log deletion or you know if you want to do any old request, now you can use this one cleanup of old requests in data show object. Okay, here it is uh, providing an option to select the ADS4 and it is providing multiple options here okay so for example select any one it is asking multiple remove old request from inbound table which is nothing but your write optimized radius so which will remove old request from change log so you have to select this one here okay so select this one and then provide your you know this one so if you do doing this one minute clean up action why it is not asking properly? A process variant a long description change such not this one. Go to edit button. So go here. Provide your radius for name and clean up action which clean up action you want to do you want to delete you know clean up action activation request you want to do or remove old request from change log table so inbound table it is coming but why it is not selecting this one okay i need to explore more there in this one Set, select all but the excel uh, latest request here you need to provide you know uh, something select all requests older than x days so here you need to provide for example more older than 90 days if you want to do then you do this kind of thing so older than 90 days request will be deleted okay so at, at the end so using this one this one we can handle the advanced ads force and using the classic one we can handle you know normal ds force okay i hope it is clear i'm stopping recording